Hello, folks. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, 11 o'clock, so we might as well get started. There might be a couple of other people joining us along the way. Um, my name's Eric Story, and I'm from the Edmonton Pride Seniors Group. So it's January 27. Thanks all for attending our weekly Aging with Pride discussion group for uh, 2SLGBTQ seniors and allies. Thank you, too, for our partners at SAGE and the Pride Centre of Edmonton. So before I introduce our speaker, I'd like to acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence gives us opportunities to learn and continues to enrich our lives. So today, I'd appreciate if everybody could uh, mute themselves so that we aren't distracted by any background noises. We'll have time for questions uh, at the questions and discussion at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, please type them into the chat and we can get to them after the presentation or you can ask them at that point. And now I'd like to introduce our speaker with great pleasure. Uh, Duncan Mills was born and raised in Onaway, Alberta. He has been president of the Edmonton Prime Timers chapter for over 10 years. Uh, Duncan has also been volunteering with several service clubs and volunteers organizations over the years. Duncan will be talking about prime timers. So Dunk, uh, take it away. Maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and about prime timers. Well, thank you very much, Eric. And as everyone, I'm getting overwhelmed with all these faces filling up the screen here. Eric, you promised me eight or 10 people and we're already up to 16 here right now. So that's certainly encouraging, but uh, thank you for inviting me and Kim, thank you for uh, facilitating this to have me along. I see several familiar faces on the screen already this morning, fellow members of our Prime Timers Club, Charles, Lawrence, Michael, and of course yourself, Eric. I'm gonna proceed on the basis that no one knows anything about Prime Timers because if we start at ground zero and we build up from there, I think that's probably the safest way to go. So uh, myself personally, I uh, live here in Edmonton. I guess you could call me semi-retired. I worked for the Royal Bank for 20 years in a variety of small towns around Alberta in the, in the 70s, 80s and 90s. I've been out of the banking business since 1996 and uh, I do a couple of projects now in the golf business. I helped the Alberta Golf Association publish their annual magazine, which satisfies some of my creative and writing urges and proofreading and editing and that kind of stuff. And I also help run a junior golf tour in Alberta during the summer with about 25 mostly one day tournaments around Alberta for junior golfers 12 to 18 to help them get some experience in the golf world for tournament play. Um, I, as Eric mentioned, I've been involved with the Edmonton Prime Timers as president for over 10 years now, mostly because no one else wants to do it. Believe me, I'm not on a power trip here to be the only president in Edmonton by any stretch, uh, but I'm pleased to help out and to volunteer and lend whatever strengths that I can to the group. Uh, uh, my late partner, Doug Gillette, and I joined Prime Timers probably about 15 years ago, I guess, eh, Eric? Uh, we used to, when we joined the Prime Timers, they met at the, uh, the old Unitarian Church. Uh, I'm sure Charles remembers that location as well, over on 126th Street, I think. But our meetings are now at the Unitarian Church on 119th Street. Anyway. Prime Timers Worldwide uh, was started in, founded in 1987 by a professor at Harvard uh, by the name of Woody Baldwin. And Woody Baldwin, uh, in the mid 80s, you've got to remember that this was, the world was a lot different than for gay men and specifically aging gay men. And Woody lamented the fact that there really wasn't too many ways that older senior gay men, or when I say senior, say over age 40, had, didn't have too many ways to uh, 
achieve social interaction with other men in our age bracket other than bars or the bathhouses. This was pre-internet. There were no chat rooms. There was no silver daddies. There was no Facebook, Twitter, none of that. And Woody decided he would get together with some of his other gay friends in the Boston area and start prime timers. Well, the idea took hold quite quickly and chapters soon followed in Atlanta and New York City and started to spread across North America. Word got out and that this was a great idea for a social club for men in our age bracket and their younger admirers, if that was the case, to have a way to get together in a social atmosphere. There had been some misconceptions over the years that Prime Timers was a dating service or was an outright sex club or something like that. I can assure you that nothing's further from the truth sort of thing. Uh, it's a way for fellows in our age group to be able to have an opportunity to meet and have social interactions with other fellows in our age group and younger men that maybe admire older men. So that's how it got started. The Edmonton chapter was founded uh, in the fall of 1992, October 1992. Michael, were you a charter member? I don't think so. I think you got in fairly early after that, did you not? I'm just going to buttonhole Michael. For I, a I wasn't. I wasn't a charter member. I was a little later. A little bit later. Okay. Yeah. But some of the fellows that uh, you know. Bill Brumelo and uh, uh, oh, uh, Eric, help me out here. Our guys on the south side. That uh, what was Bill's partner's name? I'm for passing out here. Uh, uh, Gord. Anyway, a, a handful of guys got the Edmonton chapter started in the fall of 1992. So we're coming up to close to our 30th anniversary in Edmonton now. When I first joined, uh, we had probably close to 100 members. Uh, the meetings were very active, and uh, there were lots of people coming out. To, and like any social club organization, it, we're having struggles along with Rotary and Kinsmen and all kinds of other service clubs and groups of you know retaining members as well, as a newer generation maybe just doesn't feel the need to, to join groups of any sort. But... We have a pretty active group in Edmonton of about 30 fellows that uh, we've been trying to struggle for the last couple of years to keep the momentum of the club going through COVID. We've done a mixture of Zoom meetings and whenever AHS guidelines have been relaxed enough for us to feel that it's safe for us to meet in person, whether that's outdoors or whether we're being able to hold some meetings at the Unitarian Church in an indoor setting, we've done so. So it's been a struggle, there's no question about it, but uh, you know, the fellows in this group now that are here, uh, you know, Eric and myself and uh, Charles, Michael, Lawrence, I think we've done a pretty good job in keeping the club going through the struggles that COVID has provided us. Why have prime timers? What's the purpose? What does it do? Uh, personally, I liked it because I was never a bar fly to start with. I didn't necessarily want to go out to a gay bar when we had some gay bars in Edmonton. That was never my scene, so to speak, and whatnot. I welcomed the opportunity to be able to get together in a social atmosphere to go out for dinners and have activities that we could have cookouts in the summer and go to museum tours or art galleries or sporting events or whatever the case may be. But just for the fact of being able to hang out with other gay men in our age bracket that we shared commonalities, other than just our sexual orientation, of course, but you know, that we could exchange ideas and thoughts and go to meetings. Uh, we've always tried to have an interesting uh, guest speaker uh, menu. Uh, we've had everybody at our meetings over the years from Darren Hagen to the chief of police. <laughs> I mean, that, 
that pretty much covers a pretty wide spectrum to, from, from drag queens to the cops sort of thing. So uh, our speakers have over the years covered a wide variety of topics. We've had God, Eric, who we had people like Murray Billet, Michael spoken to our group many times about some of the issues and things that are going on in the city and the, in the gay community and not just for the men, but you know, the entire LGBT community. Uh, we've often participated in the pride parade. That was, uh, I can I can still remember my first time driving the truck in the pride parade and how uplifting that was for me to have all those people out there cheering us on and stuff. So we try to be visible in the community as best we can. But as I say, it's a, it's a, a social platform. Uh, Primetimers Worldwide is the parent organization. Our current president is uh, from Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, there's a board of directors that are from chapters across North America. It's primarily the US and Canada. Uh, we do have chapters overseas in Australia, uh, a couple in England. There used to be one in Denmark. I'm not sure if it's still active, but it is primarily a US and Canada organization. In uh, Canada alone, I know we have a chapter in Nanaimo, there's one in Victoria, Vancouver is a very active chapter, Calgary. Uh, Winnipeg did have a chapter, I believe they folded, we have a big group in Toronto. Uh, so we're across Canada, um, Primetimers Worldwide host a, a semi-annual convention, uh, our most recent one was uh, the last one I attended was two years ago in San Antonio, Texas, just before the onset of COVID. Um, the next one is not been announced. It's uh, our last one was back in uh, in October. Um, Eric, again, help me out here. Where was our last international convention? I wasn't. We weren't able to get there. Uh, I out think of the it country. was going to be Chattanooga. Chattanooga, Tennessee hosted last fall. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, the next one we have has been nailed down to between Minneapolis, St. Paul and Tampa, St. Petersburg, apparently. But anyway, so that's been a good way for if we want to do some traveling. I've been to several international conventions over the years, Toronto, Palm Springs, Las Vegas, had a great time, met people from all over North America and lots of outings and great social events to get together and meet other people in our age group. Our regularly scheduled meetings are the second Sunday of every month at the Unitarian Church. We meet uh, for fellowship starting around 2.30, have a business meeting at three o'clock, hopefully a guest speaker. We're usually done by 4, 4.30, and then several of us may choose to go out for a bite to eat. This is in normal circumstances. Right now, we've sort of pulled our horns in a little bit in terms of meeting in person. We also do a regular dining out every month. Eric is our dining out coordinator. We've had some wonderful meals at a variety of restaurants around the city over the years as a way for us to get together once a month and break bread and enjoy each other's fellowship. In my tenure as president, uh, just in my time in the club, we've done tours of the art gallery, the museum, uh, Reynolds Museum out in Wetaskiwin. We've gone to the zoo for the light show, uh, art galleries. Sometimes there's just some of the guys get together for coffee. Uh, our dining outs have been very popular, as I say, and we just try and do as many things as we can to provide opportunities for other senior gay men to get together socially. So that's basically about it as far as prime timers in a nutshell, uh, what the organization is. As I say, we've had questions. Jan had a good question earlier. She said uh, she wanted to know if, she, if I felt it was appropriate that women be involved in this meeting because women are not allowed in prime timers. And I, that's a valid point. I, I guess, I, I don't know if we've, anybody's ever tested the waters legally, Eric, if women could join prime timers, but you have to keep in mind what the purpose of the organization was to be when it was founded. It was not founded 
as a way for gay men to meet gay women. It was founded for, as an organization for gay men to meet other gay men. So that was, I guess, Woody Baldwin's philosophy 30 some odd years ago, 35 years ago. We've had many gay and straight women at our meetings over the years as guest speakers. We've had uh, some of the lesbian women come to meetings and gone for dinner with us just to find out more about our organization. But yes, it is primarily a men's group. Certainly not that I don't think it was discriminatory in any way or anything like that. It's just what the nature of the club is. It's uh, kind of, you know, not anything philosophically opposed to having women involved in our meetings. It's just the nature of the group. So uh, I see a question from Joan there. Sorry, Joan, I didn't see that about an age group. Woody, it, it was founded for primarily gay men 40 and up because it was a seniors group. This was how the organization got founded, that it was not targeting younger men in their 20s and, and early 30s type of thing. Having said that, we've had, and Prime Timers as an organization has had a lot of younger, when I say younger, under 40 uh, members who maybe had an older partner, you know, the May, December thing we've had uh, in our particular chapter, we've had a few members in their 30s, but it's primarily been 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s kind of thing. Uh, Roy has a question as far as a membership fee. Yes, we charge. We didn't charge at all last year because we weren't hosting meetings. Our only costs were Zoom. So when we figured we weren't having to pay money to rent the uh, facilities at the uh, Unitarian Church, it wasn't really right that we charge a membership fee. We weren't providing any services that cost money. But our membership fees are $35 per person per year. And that basically goes to cover most of the costs of the uh, uh, rental at the church. Um, our dining out, we have, uh, the, when we go to a restaurant, everybody pays their own share. Sometimes two or three times a year, we'll have a potluck supper at the church when we've been allowed to use the kitchen and everybody contributes and chips in as far as the food goes. Um, is the organization involved in fundraising? Not specifically, Roy. Um, we have donated many times. Uh, a lot of times, if we have a speaker from, a, from an organization that's come along, we will provide them an honorarium. Maybe not be much, might be 50 or 100 bucks sort of thing. But uh, Eric, you can maybe help me on this one. I don't recall in my tenure in the last little while anyway, whether we've gone out and specifically had a, a bottle drive, so to speak to go out and raise money for a particular cause? No, I, I think, uh, as Dunk said, the primary uh, function of the group is social. And so, I mean, I know that I've, I've gotten up and uh, promoted different causes in the city. Um, but basically to say, you know, here's a cause, here's something that I think is, is worthwhile for the community. If you think it is, maybe you might want to consider um, donating or supporting it in some other way, but not, you know, nothing that I would know about. So it's really, that's, that's the concept. And I, again, I mean, for 35 or $40 a year annual, it's a very nominal fee. And it just, as Dunk said, it just goes to pay for, uh, uh, you know, the rent, we have to rent the room at the Unitarian church and uh, some other miscellaneous expenses along the way, but it's certainly Coffee not and soft a, drinks type of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because when we do have, I mean, one of the great things, and we're really hoping to get back to in-person meetings, I was saying to Dunk, I love cooking. I love baking. Unfortunately, uh, if I if I cook a ba if I cook a cake right now, I have to eat it all. the The great advantage of a potluck is I can bake something, take it, and say, "There you go. I'll just take one piece, or maybe two. Um, but th those are those are some of the ideas. Um, I think the concept of a social club is you know, this was founded in the mid 90s, it was a very different uh, time. And it was hard to meet other men in a non 
bar, non bathhouse setting. It was just that's way society has changed. I think one of the, my visions for this aging with pride, when we do start to be able to meet again in person, uh, I would hope that this aging with pride group would sort of follow the same path as a prime timers in, in terms of social activities, maybe some outings, that sort of thing. That is because I, I do think that it's as we get older, and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk too much here, although that's always happens. Um, but break. <laughs> the as we get older, I mean, you know, the number of people who pass away every year and our, our circle keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what we do need to do is keep meeting new people and adding new people to our our uh, social network. And this is very prime timers has done this for me aging with pride when we used to be able to have the drop ins that also worked very well for me. So I think of it as a very similar thing where we're going with aging with pride and where prime timers continues to go. Um, did I talk too much there? Doctor? No, that's perfect. I had a chance to wet my whistle there. Roy had another question as well. Does the group have a website? Uh, we do, Roy. It's uh, one of my shortfalls as president here. We've had um, a new webmaster on board with Primetimers Worldwide, who's a real web geek, and he's rebuilding everything for us in a new platform. Uh, we don't have it up and running yet. That's one thing we that's kind of slipped by the wayside during COVID because we really haven't a lot had any activities to promote sort of thing. Uh, there is a prime time. If you Google prime timers worldwide, it'll bring up the, the parent organization. They have a list of all the chapters and a uh, listing of activities and newsletters and that sort of thing. Uh, I communicate with the membership monthly with a newsletter, left keeping everybody informed about what's going on as much as we can, given the limited amount of social activities that we've been able to have over the last year or so. But we have a Facebook page that's a members only Facebook page. But if anyone's interested in getting, joining in that closed group, we, we kind of wanted to limit it to the people that we know would be in there sort of thing, rather than have a bunch of hackers and fishers involved and stuff. So if you wanted access to our Facebook page, Roy, for example, I'm quite sure that we would be able to facilitate that. So, um, Yes, Michael. Yeah, Duncan, thanks for that. Um, uh, the, I wanted to uh, mention a couple of things. One is that um, during the year, there are a couple of major events that, that um, Primetime always sponsors as well. A, a major Christmas dinner um, it, with the gift exchange and some kind of carol singing. I won't go into that in the detail because that sometimes kind of falls apart as to how well that scene is done. Um, kind of thing, as well as a couple other times in the year when there, there are different um, particular kinds of, of holiday sessions and that too. And I think that's, um, um, I think for many people who are a little older, holidays can be sometimes pretty lonely depending on your status and the rest. And, and having um, an event like that is, I think some, that, that many of us think of, of like Christmas and some of these holidays as time to get together. Um, that, 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 that I think is a significant um, uh, activity that's been done. Uh, I, I'd also say, <clears throat> as, as you have mentioned, um, some of us have, uh, um, uh, chatted or, or presented to the group on a number of occasions, usually advocating for something other, might be an election or who you should vote for, or different kinds of questionnaires that we want might want you to fill out, et cetera, and that. Um, and and uh, prime time has always been very um, receptive to that kind of uh, uh, discussion and 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 kind of presentations as well. Um, and, and I certainly have done many of those over the years, <clears throat> as you've mentioned. So usually it's something to push, which leads me to, since you mentioned about newsletter, is that aging and um, our, our group, Edmonton Pride Senior Group now has a newsletter as well. Um, and if you wish to have that newsletter, just in, 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 the, in the chat box, 
say that, that you want our newsletter and that, and we'll we'll uh, get you signed up, kind of thing. That so um, remember to to do that. We 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 only do a newsletter a couple times a year, and we've just done our first one. So if you aren't, haven't received one, then put your name in the chat box and say you want a newsletter. So I'll, that's my chance to push the next item that I would otherwise be talking to you about, Duncan. So uh, I'll do it this way instead. Kind of thing that. So thank and thanks for for sending on it. I I, I myself didn't know about how the organization first started back in uh, Boston, but even here locally, I wasn't quite sure that because I wasn't at, there at the very beginning. I couldn't quite remember who was involved. Thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, you you mentioned about the uh, social activities surrounding the holiday time. That's that's very important. Our Christmas party, I guess, has always been, I guess, our major highlight social event of the year when we've been able to have it. <laughs> Back in December, the Unitarian Church was not, we weren't going to be able to host it in their, uh, have the use of the kitchen and the main room, plus the fact that they've restructured their rental fees it would have ended up i think costing us eric i think it was over a thousand dollars 1200 bucks or something like that to have the main hall plus the kitchen available to us and it just wasn't going to be practical for us to do it we had a christmas dinner but we went some of us went to a restaurant and that was not as ideal obviously because over the years we've had some tremendous christmas parties with entertainment and singing and caroling and the, just a gift exchange as you say it's a great way for everybody to get together because a lot of us don't have a lot of family around Christmas perhaps we're single and not, don't have a great deal of support system for family our October meeting second Sunday of October almost always falls on Thanksgiving and we've always had a, a Thanksgiving potluck dinner where the club supplies a turkey and a ham and everybody builds around that with the other side dishes and everything and so we've had some very good holiday thanksgiving dinners as well uh, we've always tried to have a potluck over the years in february kind of a post christmas get out of the doldrums type of thing and sometimes have had some hawaiian themes and that sort of idea to uh, help celebrate the middle of winter kind of thing so Try and keep it varied and interesting and uh, bring in speakers and mm -hmm. just get together and be together with other like-minded men is, I guess, the, the main purpose of the organization. We're not out to cure cancer. It's, you know, it doesn't mean to say we've got our heads stuck in the ground and we're not aware of issues in the community and some of the concerns that the LGBT community has as a whole. We're very supportive of all that. But... Uh, Duncan, I just want to stick in, and yes, this is sir. not to be stereotypical, but a potluck catered by a bunch of gay men. I got to tell you, there is always far too much food. It's <laughs> always absolutely wonderful. And um, yeah, we usually have a couple of picnics in the summertime. Uh, again, potluck. Um, and again, it's it's really the social aspect and that's what we're counting on that's what we really want aging with pride to also uh, be creating this social network um, that you can count on that you you meet new people who have similar interests and who you can establish friendships with that's what uh, we feel is really important and i think that's what we all need as we yeah. get older um, introduce you know, keep adding to our social circle uh, and with people that we know and we like. Go ahead. I, I just want to address a couple of items in the chat box here. Uh, JW, I guess, is that Jim? Anyway, it says, you look and sound like the guy who's on whose line is it anyway? <laughs> it has meant it as a compliment. So thank you for that. I, I used to have a mustache. I had a, a mustache for the time I was about 18 years old up until my early 50s. And a lot of people thought I looked like Dr. Phil, so I'll, I'll certainly <laughs> take that as a compliment. I look like the guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? And uh, Roy had a question. Can a person just drop in on one of the Sunday meetings? Absolutely. Uh, we welcome guests. Uh, what better way to see what we're doing and what we're all about than to just drop in or make yourself available to meet one of us to go for coffee or something like that. But uh, 
Roy, if you want to uh, get me your email address separately, if you don't necessarily want to put it up here on the thing, I can certainly put you on our mailing list to keep you informed about what we're going to be doing and when we're going to be getting back together with meetings. At this point, it looks like we're probably going to hold off again for February. We're going to let this Omicron thing hopefully start to go down the far side of the mountain. There's still a lot of strain and stress on hospitals. We don't want any of our members getting sick and ending up like that poor guy in Red Deer last week that didn't get treated at an emergency ward. We don't want to contribute to that pallet. But I look for us to be back going again full speed for spring. Uh, personally, myself and Eric, Michael, a lot of these, a lot of our members, Charles as well as Lawrence, we've got a lot of time and money and sweat equity invested in prime timers, and we're not going to let COVID derail that. We want there is a place for our organization. Yeah, maybe we don't have a hundred members anymore, but if we can, if we have twenty-five or thirty and can grow from there and and build on that and provide a a platform for. Uh, for gay men in our age group and their friends to enjoy themselves socially, we're going to certainly do all we can to keep it going and, and make it as successful as we can. So Roy, I've got your email down there. I will write that down and we'll make sure you're informed about what's going on with our group. So thank you for that. Anybody else have any questions for me? I've been talking up a storm here for a half an hour and, uh, be more than willing to answer any other questions you have on the text box or put your hand up and we can try and address any issues you might have. Eric, I found a new, yes, Paul. Yeah, I don't have a question, but uh, we're privileged on this uh, site to have two presidents. Uh, both you and I are presidents of a prime chamber chapter. Uh, I was at one time uh, in Edmonton and I was on the board of directors of Prime Timers Edmonton for oh, okay. oh, about three or four years, I think, uh, both myself and my late partner. Uh, so we're very familiar uh, with, with uh, the Edmonton chapter and I like to stay in touch with Edmonton and that's why I joined these uh, Zoom calls. Where are you located, Paul? I, I recognized I'm, your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm president of the Nanaimo Prime. Timers. I thought so. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've been on other Zoom meetings for the district and stuff. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Paul's yeah. got they, Paul, the Nanaimo chapter, just as an aside, is a real success story. Um, that's you're the group that uh, Don Gillette's involved with, correct? Who? Uh, Don Gillette. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. My late partner's nephew was one of the, I think one of the founders of the Nanaimo group, correct? That he, was he instrumental in getting it? Uh, he, no, no, actually he wasn't. He came on after that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. very active in your group though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm familiar with the Nanaimo group. Uh, they're going up great. I get their newsletters and you guys are doing a great job out there with your social activities and stuff. How is it working there? Everybody seems to be okay with meeting in person and stuff? Or? Yeah, we don't uh, have uh, meetings like you do in Edmonton. Uh, that just didn't work for us. We meet socially in restaurants or, 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 or you know, social settings, outdoor settings when the weather's nice. And that's what keeps us uh, active. Okay. Uh, we also have a, a very active website, which is available worldwide. And in fact, our latest newsletter was just posted on the website today. Okay. Good. Well, Good. thank you. I, I knew I should know that face for sure. Yeah. Uh, Jim had a question. He says he's in the Cypress Hills area in Saskatoon. Is there prime timers in Regina or Saskatoon? I think Regina did have a chapter at one time, but I believe they folded it. To the best of my knowledge, Michael, maybe you, you've been around a while too. Has Saskatoon ever had a prime timers? I don't believe they have. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I was one of the people that I've had contact with there over the years has not ever mentioned who's active and things has never mentioned and would be, um, would be a member if, if, if there was one kind of thing. So I don't think Saskatoon has ever had one. I'll just further to that before I get to Ace, he had a question. 
Uh, Jim, you, there is a mechanism with prime timers worldwide that you can join as an individual person. If you're not anywhere near where there's a chapter, you can get into the worldwide network. And mm -hmm. there is a very active prime timers worldwide Facebook page. They've got about, I think it's up to about seven or 8,000 members right now. And I'm one of the moderators of that site and there's people joining every day. So there are ways for individuals to kind of be involved still with the prime timers community as a whole. Ace, uh, is there something I can help you with? You had a question? Yes, um, I'm 61, uh, but I have some friends that are like 40 and over and uh, I'm transgender. And mm -hmm. there are some trans men who identify as gay. And also there are friends that I have who are cisgendered, like they're not transgender, uh, but they identify as bisexual. Uh, is that something the group is comfortable with or uncomfortable? Well, you'd be welcome. Um, we've we had particularly because you know I'm bisexual, but I'm I'm married. Um, yeah, so we've we've people. had we've had married men as members, not many, but we have had some in the past. I know I can think of a couple that were members when I joined twenty years ago, kind of thing. Uh, we one of our former presidents is transgender. He's since transitioned out, but uh, we haven't seen him at meetings in a, in a number of years. Eric, I'm we'd welcome these no. individuals absolutely, no question. So, uh, is there a better way to to advertise that this group is available? Because a lot of people just had no idea there was anything like this. Well, that has been a shortfall of. I think prime timers worldwide as a whole, that we haven't done a good enough job to let the you know let the community know about prime timers. What was that movie, Eric, a couple of years ago that Christopher Plummer played in, and he talked about prime timers. He was a oh. widower in his seventies, and he came out to his family. I don't beginnings or something like that or something whatever. like that. Yeah. But you're so, right. Uh, yeah. Ace, it's, it's uh, an ongoing issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we certainly do a better job? Absolutely. It's a question, I guess, of manpower budgets. I mean, we're not a for-profit organization, so it's hard for us to mount a huge marketing campaign as such. We have got some some new pamphlets and brochures. We've been involved in uh, having booths at the Pride Parade and things like that to do everything we can to, you know, make people more aware of us. But it's something we can certainly do a better job of. I won't deny that. Yeah, sometimes, um, having been raised as uh, as women, and then coming to who we are truly, which is a man, we sometimes need more of an emotional connection. We can't just go in. Do the bars and the bathhouses and stuff yeah. it's not comfortable for a lot of uh trans men so they want to meet somebody socially and, yeah. and develop it from there if it happens or well function. if you let eric or myself know of how we can stay in touch with you uh we will certainly be more than willing to keep you informed about what we're doing and when we get going again with meetings and stuff okay Thank you. Uh, there's a comment in the chat room. It says in Saskatoon, throughout Saskatoon, there's a coffee row group, an all-inclusive group, many friends. Yeah, uh, there are other. Montreal, for example, does not have a prime timers group, but they have a very active group that's essentially the same thing. They're not under prime timers worldwide umbrella, but they're a senior gay men's group in Montreal. So there are other similar organizations to prime timers that don't specifically fall under the umbrella of prime timers worldwide i'd like to just uh add that you know it's the sort of thing that it's prime timers is there when people want to find it sort of thing i can remember in the in the past we put up pamphlets in the bars and and so on and really it was trying to make the community aware of us but uh, a lot of a lot of what the uh, 2SL LGBTQ uh, community seems to focus in on is youth and um, this is common in many many areas that the seniors are sort of 
forgotten about. And I think it's really important for that social connection. So in the past, even though we put uh, information out, if somebody didn't feel that it was appropriate or necessary for them at that time, they, they didn't join in. But I think, you know, for myself, when I retired, um, I was invited to go to a prime timers meeting and I've enjoyed, I look forward to those meetings ever since, particularly the potlucks, obviously. Um, right so, indeed. you know, that I think that those are the types of things that we need to look at is who needs those social connections again going from prime timers to aging with pride i'm really hoping that when we can start meeting again we can start to create those social connections as well but uh there is a the prime timers the edmonton prime timers facebook page is um again it's one of those that is only available to members because in the past and this is sort of a holdover that there were quite a few members who didn't want anybody to publicly know that they were gay and that still to a certain extent exists for some people so the prime timers the EPT Edmonton prime timers is a uh, closed group you need to be invited to join and that's simply to provide the confidentiality but that uh, website, that uh, Facebook group has been fairly quiet because, of course, we've been quiet for the past two years. Uh, but that's another one that if you'd like to send your email to either myself or to uh, Dunk, um, we'd be happy to send you an invitation to that uh, Facebook group so that you can stay in touch. Well, just a sec. I'm, I'm starting to write my email address on here, but I... Hit a tight, I hit a space bar here. Mm -hmm. well, while you're doing that, Dunk, I'll just mention it again if you want a newsletter from Edmonton Pride Senior Group, the, the address is on on uh, in the, the chat box now. And, and if you or if you put you want the newsletter in there and with your name, then we'll make sure you get it. Wonderful. I'm just plugging <laughs> as usual. That's allowed. So there's my address, my email address, curlerguy at gmail.com. Golfguy at gmail was taken. So 25 years ago when I got a Gmail, <laughs> 20 years ago, I went with curler guy as my winter sport instead of my summer sport. So welcome to hear from anybody. Uh, you know, I can say I have I don't have the, the confidentiality issues, so to speak, anymore. Uh, I'm out completely. I now I'm I don't advertise the fact that I'm gay. I'm not wearing a banner on my forehead, my ample forehead or anything like that, but I'm- I, I wear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Anyways, Dr. Duncan, I, do you get our newsletter as well? I don't think I do, Michael. But you want it, I'm sure. Yes, please, yeah. Okay, I've, good. I've been remiss on that. And yeah, Roy, yeah. yes, I will, I'll look yeah, after yeah. that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've got your R. Jefferson email address there. We'll get you involved in that. We'd love yeah. to have you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, folks, it's been, thank you very much, Dunk. Is, if anybody has any other questions, um, please throw them in. But aside from that, I'd just like to say that uh, after this, you'll receive a survey, a questionnaire. We're really interested in knowing what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong on these weekly Aging with Pride uh, Zoom calls. So uh, please, when you get that survey, please do respond to it. And uh, just put in a plug that uh, next week, our guest will be Linz Lindy Pratch from the uh, Edmonton Public Library, uh, which does a great job of, connect again, does a great job of connecting people in the community and providing resources. So I'd uh, encourage you to uh, send an email to the Pride Center saying that you want to be signed up for either the next session or every session, and they'll just automatically send a link to you for every time. Um, let me think, sign up for the uh, Edmonton Pride Seniors Group newsletter. Um, and let's just as hopefully as uh, things progress, let's look at ways that we can uh, start to connect in person a little bit more. And I certainly, that's one of the goals of Aging with Pride. 
we started, uh, you know, it started as an in-person social meeting. We've gone to uh, virtual in order to accommodate the times, but I'm really looking forward to the time that we can return back to in-person meetings. Um, and that's not to disregard prime timers, which is a great, I really enjoy those meetings as well. I'm just a social animal, what can I say? Eric, I just wanna say, I wanted to thank your group for inviting me today. I've sat in on a few of your sessions now, and I think it certainly provides an important role in the LGBT community. I'm very pleased to have been provided this opportunity to talk about prime timers to the men and women in the group. Uh, the more knowledge there is out there in the community about who we are and what we do, if somebody's networking and has a likely candidate that would enjoy what we do socially, by all means, please let us know and we'll make sure we get that in person involved in our network. Listen, uh, if there are no other comments or questions, I guess we'll call it a day for today. Thank you all for attending. I really appreciate it um, and hope that you'll uh, join in on some of our sessions in the future. Um, thanks again, everybody. Thanks, yeah. thanks Doug. Bye now. Thank you very much, Doug. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye now.